everybody, it's Walter here, and you're here at the Naked Forex webinar. Just wanted to check and make sure that uh, you can hear me okay and that the sound's coming through and you can see my screen. Beautiful. Thank you, Gabriel. Hi, Marlon. Welcome, Mike. Hi, Philip. Thank you, Adinda. Your screen is frozen. Hey, Frederick, welcome. Hi, Gam. Cameron, if your screen is frozen, I think you're the only one. I, I hate to report, but I think that's that that's the case. Hey, Pan on Fire. Okay, guys, welcome and thank you so much for spending time here today. I know more people are starting to trickle in right now. Uh, yeah, Gabriel, if you if you relog in, hopefully you'll be quick enough and you won't miss much. Today we're going to talk about the first touch trade. Now, let me show you. Uh, my name is Walter Peters, and you know about, most of you have probably read the book here, Naked Forks, that I wrote. This system that we're going to talk about today is actually not in the book. It didn't make the cut. Um, so I only had so much space, you know, in terms of, you know, chapters and charts and things like that. And I like to in the book I like to use a lot of examples so you really get a good idea of what the system looks like in practice and so I didn't really have room for this one although it, it and one of the reasons I didn't include it is because it doesn't happen all that often but we actually do have one right now so um, I want to show you what it looks like and here's this is okay let's just talk about this this is the Aussie dollar four-hour chart right and what you're looking at here is a big giant box. So you've got a couple of touches up here at the top of the box. One, two, three. This is a, probably a near miss, uh, depending on where you draw the box. And then we've got some touches down here at the bottom of the box. And then we've, of course, got sort of these uh, couple of spots in the middle of the box. Usually there's one, at least one spot in the middle of the box where the market has sort of. Um, found support and resistance in the middle. Now some people might actually differ with this how I drew this box. Some people are going to say that that the box is a little bit different and that in fact, let's see if I can I can't do it. I'm trying to select the box, but some people might actually draw the box something like this. Let me show you. Some people are going to draw the box like this and say that these two moves out of the box are false breakouts. And that's okay. Um, one of them would have been a uh, last kiss trade right here. This move back up into the box and then where it fell away and it was a nice, uh, it actually hit, hit uh, the profit target quite nicely right here. That would have been a, a last kiss trade. It didn't go much further than that, but it did hit sort of that first area where a profit could have been taken. But the um, I, I draw my box a little bit bigger, and so I consider this the bottom of the box, and then this area here is the middle. But we also also have a, a, an area of support and resistance right here at 92. So this is how this trade works. Let me show you on the one hour chart, because this is where the, the, the trade is just gone right now. What I like to do on the first touch trade is I wait for the market to give me a nice area of support and resistance. So on this chart you can see we've got a really good uh, resistance here at this level. This is the 93.30 level. And then when the market gets away from that area, I wait for it to come back and touch it for the first time. And then I just go with it. So here is the first touch trade on the Aussie dollar. It's this one hour touch right here. So the market came down uh, two hours ago and made a low at 93.37. And then the last hour it spent going up and it closed up. It closed all the way up here at 93.57, which is pretty much on the high, right? I missed it by a pip. Now what that means is this is a brilliant opportunity to get into a buy trade here and see if it can really go. Now, of course, we know if we look at our um, Aussie chart, recently the market's been moving up, right? Recently, the market's been moving up. It, it's been making higher lows and uh, higher highs. So 
whereas before it was sort of choppy inside the box, now it's busted out of that box. Not only can we trade this as a first touch trade, it's the first time the market's come back to a touch a level, but it's also a, sort of a last kiss trade too on the one hour chart. It wouldn't be anything on the four hour chart just yet, but on the one hour chart, this would certainly qualify as coming back down, touching the edge of the box and printing a nice bullish candle. Now, the real aggressive traders actually don't even wait for confirmation. See, to me, the confirmation comes in on this trade right here where this bullish candle filled in. Now, it's not a bullish big shadow. It doesn't completely engulf the prior candle, but it does give me enough to know that, yeah, it looks like the market's going to respect 93.30 and it looks like it's going to move higher. Now, let's talk about stops and profit targets and all that fun stuff. The easiest way to trade this is to simply stick a stop loss below the low of those candles. And I would, this is where I like it. I don't like to put it right on the zone because it could double bottom, but I like to put it a little bit further away. That's going to be a risk of buying right now on this chart. That would be a risk of about 35 pips. So I'm risking 35 pips. And where might I take profit? Well, this area right here looks like a really nice spot to take profit right here. And that's around 94.12. So let's say I, I wanted to be really conservative. I want to see the market make a new high. So I wanted to see it go to 93.65 and make a and trigger my buy order. And then I would take profit at 94.11, which is 46 pips away. And I would put my stop loss down here at 38 pips away at 93.27. That would be a first touch trade. Now some traders actually don't even wait for this bullish candle. They just take the trade immediately. So uh, as soon as the market gets there, you just boom, go, go for it. Now, there are some other ones that are setting up, I should point out. It's not just the Aussie dollar here. If you look at other pairs, such as uh, the Swiss yen, the Swiss yen could come down. Now look at this box here. The markets touched it here back in April. It touched it again right here in April, at the end of April. Came back up and touched it again here in July. Touched it again here. That was in August. And then it finally broke through and it just barely broke through, it fell back in the box and then finally broke through just recently. So here's the thing. If the market gets down, now it's a little bit fuzzy because of this false breakout. This false breakout kind of messes things up here. I really like these when they're much cleaner. Um, and so for that reason, I will, I'm probably going to take this one as more of a of a confirmation. I'll look for a bullish candle to confirm um, instead of, uh, you know, just taking it right when the market hits this level. So this is this would be a buy at 107.20, given that, you know, we've seen the market touch there several times in fall. So this is how a first touch trade works. Let me write the rules up here so everyone's clear. You wait for the market to make several touches on a support and resistance zone. That's number one. That's the easy one. Okay. Now, what will probably happen is it will make several support touches or resistance touches, but it usually won't make both, right? So what I'm and so in this case, of course, it made a bunch of resistance touches. Resistance, it fell. Resistance, it fell. Resistance fell. Resistance fell. Resistance fell. Resistance fell briefly and then broke through. So the market makes several touches on a support and resistance zone. And the cleaner, the better. In other words, it's best if the touches are really, really close to each other. So let's talk about this. Uh, the high on this touch was 107.42. The high on this one was 107.17. Remember, this is a daily chart. The high on this one was 107.17 again. The high on this one was 107.26. And the high on this one was 107.50. So it was within about 40 pips. All these touches are within about 40 pips, which on the daily chart, that's pretty acceptable. 30, 40 pips is really where they should all range in terms of a daily chart trade. They should all be pretty close, within 30 or 40 pips. So that's good. Now, when it comes down here, I have a choice. 
assuming of course that the market does fall down here and get down to 107.21 I have a choice I can just take the trade and just buy as soon as it hits 107.21 right I can just say okay my order is at 107.21 and I put my order in there and then I put my stop loss 50 pips away 50 pips is gonna be 80 right no 70 so 107 106.70 so I could just buy it as soon as the market hits 107.20 my stops at 106.70 uh, and that's it and where would I target well it looks like I've got some pretty nice uh, possible areas like these lows right here would be a nice target of 91 pips these lows would be 117 these lows here would be 180 and these highs up here would be uh, 210 pips so that's how I would approach this one now because of this little fake out here where the market broke up and then fell back down it kinda messes things up because the question becomes is the market really gonna bounce off my 107.20 level or is it going to bounce off this level, right? That's kind of where it gets a little fuzzy here. Uh, and I, for that reason, it's, you know, some of these yen pairs, they all look the same. If you look at the euro yen, you have a similar deal. Uh, Singapore yen. So it's kind of, it's not the best, cleanest last uh, first touch. It would be really, really good if we didn't have this false breakout here. But we have it, so we have to deal with it. So the so what that means is I can set an alert on my chart and if the pair gets down to 10748 I can watch the 1 hour and see if it or the 4 hour either one and see if it gives me a nice bullish move and I can trade off the bullish move. Um, I probably wouldn't take this trade blind simply because I know that there's two competing levels here and I don't know which one it's going to bounce off of, you know? Uh, so because of that I'll probably just wait for the big bullish candle to confirm but I don't always do that this can be a very risky trade and when I say risky what I mean is you know you don't have any price action to actually tell you you're just hanging your hat on the the support and resistance level and that's why it's so much better when you have a really clean level of support and resistance some of you that have been watching um, and coming to the webinars here for a long time you know that we've been watching uh, this sort of setup for a long time and we actually had one uh, let me show you I think it was last year yeah here it is right here so this was a really nice one on the Euro Aussie where the Euro Aussie found support there's a kangaroo tail right here and found support and then the market found uh, support again right here and found a bullish big shadow and then here it found support support and finally broke broke through now I said, well, this is a brilliant level. This was the all-time low for this pair for a long time. And then finally it broke through here and made new new lows. I said, as soon as the market gets up there, I'm going to sell it. And I thought it was going to happen here, and it didn't. And it finally came up here in May, and it tagged it right here. And that was a beautiful first touch. I know some of you here that took that trade. Um, someone mentioned that they held it for like 1,000 pips or 1,100 pips or something. Maybe it was nine. I think it was nine hundred pips. Yeah, it, down to this area here. So these trades can go for a long ways. The the cleanest zones are the best. So this one was so nice because it had so much support here, and it really didn't vary. They were all really clean touches down here. So those are the ones I love to see. You know, those are the ones I really love to see. Um, <clears throat> now this chart's kind of messy. Uh, although you could make a case that we, we could have a really nice uh, first touch trade right here on this area, right around here. That would be a nice spot to see the market fall down to and then, and then buy off of that. Let me put an arrow there so you can see. So there you go. So that is a really nice uh, zone right here. That would be a spot. And again, why do I like this spot? Because the market found uh, support there. Now in this case, you're not really, um, usually what happens is you're flipping it. So I had support back here, and then I'm taking support again. But normally what happens is you do it like this one right here. Let me show you. See this area right here, 
Boom. Look at this box. Beautiful looking box. It's got all of the things we were talking about on the Aussie dollar, which is it's got really nice uh, support, support, resistance, 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 right? Um, and it's got the middle of the box where you have a nice support and resistance level right there, right? That's really nice to see. And then it finally breaks out of the box on this big green candle right here. So now the question becomes, you know, where is the market going to go? Uh, is it going to come back and touch this level? Well, I want to move my chart around here for some reason. I want to like adjust it. <laughs> I want to make it a little bit easier to manage. Let's see here. Like this. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay, cool. Okay, so when I hit the F12 key, what will happen now is that it will advance one candle at a time. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so now the market's broken out. Now what I'm saying is if the market comes back down to this level, this 43.92 level, I can buy as a first touch trade. It hasn't hit it yet. This candle made a low of 44.77. No. That candle made a low of, yeah, 44.77. And then the next candle, boom. Ah. If you look at this on the lower time frame chart, that's where it would have been nice. And actually, the low here, 4448. So, what it, what's the highs here? The, this one has the high, this one has the highest high? Which one has the highest high? Yep, 76, and this one has 54, so it's definitely this one, okay. So on this box right here, I would have to move it up to around the 50 area to include that one, yeah. Yeah, like that. And you can see the market on this candle made it as low as 48, okay. And this one went as low as 41. So if I used a 50 pip stop, I would have been sort of, you know, it's nice that the market went up here, but yeah, it went up about 150 pips, but it also came down and went into about a 10 pip drawdown before it finally took off here and then double topped up here where the market topped out up there. See, boom, boom. Uh, that would have been a really nice target, obviously, where the market topped out up there. But that's the kind of, that's the kind of move. Are there any questions? about the uh, first touch trade. So the basic idea is you've got support, 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 the market breaks that support, comes back down and or comes back up and finds it as resistance and you and you can go in really aggressively or you can wait for a, a candle to confirm that it's probably gonna turn around there. I like to use a 50 pip stop. Sometimes on more, on more volatile pairs, I might use a 60 pip stop like on the pound yen. Um, for a, just a entry where you're just going in just blindly just boom right on the zone and then um, I like to take profit at least uh, at least one to one but usually more aggressive than that and then I actually just like to let it go and see if how far it can go because once in a while maybe one out of every eight trades it'll just go and go and go So Droofs is asking about the, are you talking about the euro Aussie, which time frame on the four hour? Yeah, okay, let's talk about this. I think what you're talking about is this box right here, right? You talking about this box? Is that what you're talking about? I don't use moving averages for targets, Pan, no. Drew, you must be talking about this box, yeah? See, here's the problem I have with this box, is that it has an upper side because it's got at least two touches, but I don't know, do you count this as a double bottom, like two touches on the back? I like to see my boxes actually have two touches on both sides. So for this one, I'm not sure that I would count this. You know, this might be just one touch to me, and then it had an opportunity to find support here, but it didn't. It broke through and came back up. Yeah, does that make sense? 
Uh, Gabriel says there's an Aussie Kiwi four hour trend line trade. Okay, let's see. Right, so um, so you're looking at this obviously, right? Something like this, or maybe like this. This to me looks like a almost like a parabolic trend. You guys familiar with those where you you know the market keeps making steeper um, following steeper trend lines and usually they collapse rather quickly. Oh, trend line is daily. Oh, okay. Usually when you when you can draw at least three trend lines and each of them gets steeper uh, that follows price, usually those are uh, parabolic. That's a de definition of a parabolic trend and those will usually collapse uh, really quickly. Let's see the um, daily here. Oh my gosh. Got all these wild lines drawn on here. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of these. Okay, here we go. So, are you talking about a sell on this trend line here? Yeah, that's the drunk spider, I agree. <laughs> Gabriel, is it a trend line that's a sell on this one, or is that what you're kind of seeing? The two higher lows. Ah. Oh. I don't really see it. Oh, oh, you're talking about this. Talking about that? Ah, got it. Okay, yeah. So you're saying it's it's broken this trend line and it's come back to touch it. Yeah, the, the weird thing about this trend line is that see how the market kind of moved away from it for so long? Yeah. I prefer, I guess I'll have to admit. I prefer to have them where you know the market kind of sticks to it, I guess. And and to be honest, I found that the um, that the horizontal levels of support and resistance work so much better than trend lines anyway. Everybody seems to draw their trend lines differently, you know. Um, now I've got another drunk spider on here, but basically, yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of trend line I, I would probably draw, you know, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about first touch trade. So we have some on, uh, we have a potential one here. This is your, whoa, let's just go back to the four hour on this one. This is the Euro Yen. Let me show you the daily. Oh, that was the daily. This is the Euro Yen daily. And so, you know what? <laughs> let's just get a new chart here <laughs> I almost just want to get rid of all this stuff you know what let's let's try the four hour yeah okay that one's clean okay see I have this thing about messy charts all right here's the euro yen box it looks something like this okay so I've got the market uh, finding so something like this right so here's the market finds resistance resistance support false breakout support support so it's got three touches as support two touches as resistance and then one false breakout on the upside one false breakout on the downside and then finally the market takes off here okay so now the question is uh, the problem again with this one, similar to the Swiss yen, it's got a couple of spots where it could get hung up. It could actually first touch right here, uh, but so far it doesn't look like it wants to. It looks like it does want to go slightly lower. And so the way to trade this one is to wait for the market to get down here to 132.35, and then I can go in blind and just take a trade there and put my stop loss down here at around... I would probably go 60 pips on the euro yen because it's a little bit more volatile. And so my stop's going to be down here at 74, 131.74. And then I've got a nice target up here at 132.21. And I've got a nice target right here at 134.28. So this is another possible first touch trade. Again, ideally, you wouldn't have this false breakout over here because that kind of makes it a little dirty. 
but it's much cleaner when you have a, a nice clean area of support and resistance when you have that really nice clean level so for example if you're looking at the pound Aussie let's say the nice thing about the pound Aussie is the pound Aussie has got a really nice level well, first of all let's just notice that we've got a touch here okay get rid of this channel because it's just weird get rid of this arrow and all this stuff here's the thing about this one um, you have this box right here and we had a first touch trade didn't we on this on this box didn't we It was right there false breakout false breakout you got lots of touches two on the upside another third one that finally it breaks out comes back down and boom it hits it right here and then it goes these are the beautiful ones because you remember you're taking a trade off here uh, you've got 50 pips of risk which is fine it didn't hit it at all even if I get on, got in on this really big red candle and I had to deal with this wick I still didn't get stopped out uh, the other thing is the pound Aussie is a very volatile pair I'd also probably use a 60 pip stop on this one but it just runs off to the races then you know it just takes off so 636 pips you know so um, yeah it's really uh, so the nice thing about this pair is look we've got a beautiful a really beautiful level here this 6830 level where we found resistance actually I would probably even draw it a little bit higher maybe maybe 6840 but we got a touch a touch a touch we've got another one here another one there so this is a great one if it falls through this level guess what if it falls through 6840 and then comes back up and touches it here that would be a beautiful first touch why because it's been defined by one two three touches right and it depends on where you draw it I I like to sort of it's not it's again it's a little bit shaky but it's got a 30 pip range here I like to use the line chart because that means I'm using closing prices so that would be this bend right there the line chart is the one when I when I'm a little bit confused I don't know what to where to draw the line I always go with the line chart and the, the closing prices will save the day for me okay lots of questions here let's get into the questions um, Yuka says the CAD yen four hour chart has been consolidating for two weeks two and a half weeks and it's just broken out so let's take a look right okay um, let's see here so okay I think I know what you're talking about now you're talking about this box right here Yuka is this right I'm guessing this is the box you're looking at that is that right something similar yes okay so <clears throat> how would I deal with this one well let me make sure that I've got a nice clean area here uh, the, the the tricky part of course is that we have a belt here that sort of hung outside of this one but if I look at my line chart I've got a nice bend there there's one there and there's one there and then of course right there before we broke out so this one would qualify this would be a sell first touch I've got uh, mines at 95.71 so I would be now remember this shouldn't really happen now this should have there should be many candles where it goes away and comes back it could go away for a couple months and come back it could go away for a couple of weeks but it's probably not going to be a couple of days one of the defining features of like last kiss trades and first touch trades is that you know it really is the first time it comes back and it should spend time away from it it really shouldn't happen immediately because when that happens immediately that's the problem with those is they can be false breakouts you know but yuka this is a really good one we should watch this one for first touch we'll watch this one I'm gonna watch this sucker so 
over the next couple of weeks, we'll see where it, where it comes if it comes back. All right, more questions here. You said you like to see at least two touches on either side of the box before it breaks out. Uh, no, no, Drew, the box isn't really critical for a first touch. I was just talking about boxes in general. Sorry to confuse. Basically, like for example, remember the Euro Aussie? The Euro Aussie, uh, this didn't have a box. It just had a really strong support level. And here it is. Let me just back up. The, really all we need is a strong support level. So we got touch one right here, which is a kangaroo tail. Touch two right here, which is a bullish big shadow. And touch three, which was just consolidation and when it finally fell. This wasn't really, I didn't really look at this as a box, although I probably could have drawn a box here with the highs up here, you know? But that's not, it's not important that a first touch has a box. The only thing that's important for the first touch is that it has a well-defined level of support or a well-defined level of resistance. And obviously we had that here because remember, if you go back on this pair, this was the low. The market did, hadn't gone any lower than this. If you go back in time, you'll see um, it just didn't go any lower than that. So that was it. That was the spot. That uh, was 30. 1.30 right there. That was the spot. Okay, so let's move on. We've got more questions here. Great. First quest, first touch questions. Um, Minaj says, Hey, Walter, the first touch trade has many fans and followers. I am curious as to who is on the other side of the trade. Who is selling the Aussie dollar at the moment and why? Um, let's, you know what, that's a really good thing. Let's see here. I'm going to go to my website and I'm going to show you guys a tool that I like to use. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, you can't see my screen, can you? Hold on a second. Hold on. I will... I'm going to uh, just share the screen, guys. Hold on a second. Okay. Now, if you go to my website, uh, fxjake.com forward slash uh, forward slash crowd, it's forward slash crowd, right? Um, this will link up a uh, website where you can see what other people are doing. So, you said the Aussie dollar, right, Minaj? So it's really kind of a mix. It's like 60-40, you know. Um, yeah, it's not really, it doesn't really tell us. The ones I like, of course, are the uh, the ones like this, like silver. When we get when we get everyone doing one thing, I, I do the opposite. But So that's not a very good example. No, not a very good example. But let's talk about this. So who, why would someone buy, or sorry, why would someone sell um, the Aussie dollar? Because we're buying it, right? Well, a lot of people have, uh, probably people late to the party that, you know, have seen this pair and they've said, oh, look, it's, you know, been going down forever. Now I finally got a chance to sell it because it's come high, you know. Look, the Aussie dollar has been falling, 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 and I finally get a chance to sell it up here, you know. I don't know. I don't, it's hard for me to get into the mindset of, other traders. I know people who are into fundamental analysis are really good at that, but I I am not so good. Not 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 a good person at you know defining what other people are doing. Um, my favorite thing, of course, is to find a lot of people doing one thing and then doing the opposite because that usually works quite well in the markets. But um, yeah, I don't I don't really know. It's a mixed bag now, obviously, with the Aussie dollar going up and down. You know. Um, get, um, sorry, I don't have any better, anything better than that for you, Minaj. But it's you know it's not important for me to get to the whys. What I know is that when I trade these technical systems, I know that they're very uh, robust, and so that's what's important to me, really. You know. So here's one on the, Rasika says, what about the Euro Kiwi? Did you see what's happening on that one? Um, ah, a 
I think I know what you're looking at, Rasika. You are looking at this. So here's our big box on the Euro Kiwi. And you can see the Euro Kiwi's got, again, does it fit my rules here? The box isn't important. The, the, this upper side doesn't matter. First touch, the main thing that matters is that the market has given us a clean level of support and resistance. Sorry, of support here, which it has. It's right here. This line right here at 64.25. I'm gonna make it red so it stands out. This level. That's the critical spot here. And so really, this would be an ideal opportunity to take a totally crazy blind first touch trade. But because the Euro Kiwi is such a wild pair, I would use a 60 pip stop. So if I were to sell this pair right here, I would have my stop at 64.79. This is where I would do it right here. Now, I would target uh, 63.10, 63.10 right here, these highs. That's what I would do on this one. Now, if I were a more conservative trader, I'd wait for a red candle and then I would do it. But um, just in a really aggressive first touch trade is, and this is a good one. Who, who Rasika, yeah. Rasika pointed this one out. This is a really good aggressive first touch setup. And again, why is that? Because every time the market came back down here, it found support, 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 support. Uh, there was one case where it blew through it, of course. But um, it found a lot of support. This was the, the, the false breakout here. But because of such a nice clean level, um, we would look to this and say, okay, it's going to touch here and fall away. I, I'm a little bit scared though because you can see in this big bullish candle yesterday and then today's. Um, today's really doesn't scare me because it hasn't closed yet. But obviously yesterday's was pretty bullish. Um, so that would be a tricky one. But sometimes what happens on these is they actually just go a little bit. So maybe this one might go, uh, you know, maybe it only goes to this area right here and only falls 40 pips. Some traders might decide to move the stop to break even as soon as it goes 40 pips in profit and then wait for the 110 pip target, you know, or the 107 pip target, something like that. But the nice thing about these is they can really go and, and this one could fall. Like if you look at it from the daily chart, this one could easily fall. I mean, it wouldn't be a shock if it were to fall 324 pips down to these lows, right? Remember, that's 60 pips of risk, so that's 5 to 1. The thing though is that um, they tend to, they, of the systems I trade, they don't have the high, the highest win rate. Like some like the Big Shadow has a great win rate, a high win rate. These don't tend to have such high win rates because a lot of them will get stopped out. So you really do have to be patient and wait for the big winner. That's a critical part of this, really. Um, now, Gabriel, Gabriel is saying that the silver four hour chart has a very similar setup. Let's take a look. <clears throat> um, a first touch to sell. I don't see it right now, or did it already happen, Gabriel? All oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so first of all, a lot of people that trade head and shoulders are probably pretty excited about this chart because they're going to look at this and go, look, it's a head and shoulders. It's a shoulder here, a head here, and we're sort of in this shoulder area over here, although this shoulder didn't make it as high as the first shoulder, so maybe it still has a little bit of move, movement to go. But if the market broke through, let's say that it breaks through, and let's say I draw mine at 2138. If silver falls below 2138, um, then I would sell it on a first touch right here at 2138. So if it fell through and came back, yep, that's a very good that's a very good example of what a first touch looks like. Very good. Yep, that's a great example. Because look how many touches. You get a wick here, a close here, another wick, another wick, another couple of wicks, and then it's now it's coming back down. So that would be a great one, yeah. And the other thing I like about silver is everyone's going long silver right now. So 
Uh, I like the idea. I'm still in that gold sell trade from weeks ago. I sold gold off this kangaroo tail right here. It hit my first target at 1332. I'm still waiting for 1200. So, um, pound New Zealand is it similar to the Euro Kiwi? Asked Ria. Yeah. Let me sh bring this one up. Uh, not as much. I would say not quite the same. No. Uh, no, not quite the same. The best spot, possibly the best spot for a first touch on the pound New Zealand would be this area here, uh, where we have these two touches. But uh, ideally, it would have had another one. It kind of got sloppy over here when it touched it, fell through, and then went back up and then fell. But um, I don't really have a level where we're at. We, I've already sort of broken that, I guess, on my chart. I would uh, first well actually the best first touch would be um, would probably be this level right here yeah on the pound New Zealand I'd be looking for this level right there that's that's kind of that's kind of the obvious spot there to me that one yeah um, Gabriel says I took a kangaroo tail on the New Zealand yen four hour and got stopped if you want to take a look. You know, I've been waiting for the Swiss Yen and pair on the four hour, you said? I've been waiting for the uh, Swiss Yen and the Euro. Oh, that one, yeah. Okay, here, here's, this is an interesting one. Because I think some people got taken out. Um, um, let me show you why I think these two spots are better. There's a lot of touches here as resistance, 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 and then support. So this would be a great spot for a, a, a trade right here off this level. And that is right around the 8120. The other spot, it would be where it's heading right now, which is 8060, 8065 right there. Those would be the spots to take a trade. Now I can understand why someone might take one here, but you've only really got this one little jig to hang your hat on. Let me show you what I mean. On this trade here, um, this is the G Gabriel. This is the one you took, right? This this kangaroo tail right here. That's got to be it. Yeah. Okay. So the the zone that this one is on is the green one. I'm going to make it green right now. That's the zone that this printed on, right? And really, uh, the red zones are better because. This first red zone is much better, the 8120, because it's got so many touches as a resistance, 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 and then support. So it's really well defined, right? The market's already broken through it, though. And this kangaroo tail is not on that red zone. Some people are going to look at this kangaroo tail and they're going to say, oh, it's on the red zone, the 8120 level. No, it's not. This kangaroo tails, to me, should do this. They should have their head on one side and then the tail pierces the zone like this one did. So really, this would be a buy trade off of that touch right there. So Gabriel sees this happening. The market, in fact, does trade higher and triggers the trade. And so it does everything, uh, everything is correct. The only thing that I would say is bad about this is that the spot that it printed on is just not that good, that's all. These spots would be much better. And if it blows through these spots, where would be the next spot? Well, it looks like there's a nice one right here. This would be the next one right here. So we have, oops, let me, so this level right here would be support, resistance, resistance, and support. So 7744, that would be the next level if it were to blow through uh, 8064, which is really the next best spot to take a reversal trade on these uh, on this yen pair. Yep. Does that make sense? No worries, Gabriel. Yeah, I just, yeah, I mean, the thing about the tail, the kangaroo tail itself is absolutely stunning. It's the best looking thing you can get in terms of a kangaroo tail. It has all of the aspects you're looking for. Uh, the only thing that it could have done is it could have had 
if you're really going to get nitpicky here, you could say, you know, if the top, if the open and the close were in the top 10%, because I don't think it is. If the open were just a little bit higher, then we, you know, but, but really, it has everything you need here. It's just it was not well placed. Really, the best spots are well defined like this. That's it. That's it. Okay, New Zealand yen. Or sorry, New Zealand Swiss. Um, Hajj is asking, why do you call it that name, a kangaroo tail? Um, Hodge, it's in, it's in the book I wrote called Naked Forex. And, um, it's all, you know, all about kangaroo tails there. There's basically rules. Uh, we've had some sessions on the kangaroo tail. Yeah, I'm in Oz. Yeah. Okay. So the New Zealand Swiss says Jack. He's short the New Zealand Swiss. Let's see if I can figure out what Jack's done. Let's see, Jack. What have you done? Short the New Zealand Swiss. Hmm. Daily. I'm afraid I don't see where you shorted it. Let me just see here. I mean, the market's broken through here. I guess if I had, to, if I was pressed, I would probably say it was a busted kangaroo tail on the one hour or something, or hit this kangaroo tail and the market went below it, and then you took the busted kangaroo tail. I'm not sure what time frame. Daily, okay. I'll go to daily. Let's see daily. Um, I don't see it, Jack. I don't see any trade here. Oh, so you had a kangaroo tail up here. Oh, okay, yeah. See, my charts close uh, at 5 p.m. New York time. So what that means is uh, they're going to be a little bit different from the charts that close at midnight GMT, like FXCM, yeah. So maybe that's what you see a better kangaroo tail up here. I didn't get one. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at the New Zealand dollar. Sorry. You're absolutely correct. Ah, this one right here. Right. So you saw a double top up here. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and you probably had a uh, more of a kangaroo tail here. See mine, the open, the close are not in the bottom third of the candle, so it doesn't qualify as a kangaroo tail. But see, the thing about this trade now is you're you're getting into now the areas where you're expecting to find some support. Actually, uh, it's already lower than this level, which is 75. I would expect to see support around 75. In fact, you might even see the market come back up and close above 75 by the end of the day. It might find a little bit of support on top of these highs, but failing that. The next spot will be right here where the market found support, support, resistance. That's going to be around 74.22. Then the next one is down here, right? 73.40 and then finally all the way down here. Well, these highs right here at 72.40 and then down here at 72 even. So this looks pretty good, especially the fact that you're getting big red candles. Depending on how today closes, if today closes with a big red candle, you know that you've got some downward momentum like we had here. So that's great. That's a. Uh, if I were in this trade, I would even move the stop to break even, assuming that you got in around 75.94. You're up 110 pips. I would probably move the stop to break even for sure if I were you. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely would have given a bend. Yeah. Yeah, it would definitely would have bent right here on that candle, yesterday's candle. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a ghost peak too. That's a good one, Frederick. It is too. You're right. Um, Dale, Dale is, we can go to the New Zealand dollar, but we've got to close it down really quick. Walter, one question. If you have a trade like the one in the New Zealand yen, let's say, do you select the strongest pair or do you take the trade where the signal is? Because I sometimes notice that the strongest pair performs better. Yeah. If you're going to choose, go with the strongest one. Exactly. So maybe like the Swiss yen, right? Instead of the New Zealand yen. Depending on what's, you know, best. 
the US dollar Singapore is showing a short opportunity if it falls. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. This is a great one. This is it right here. Uh, I sold this pair all the way uh, back here on this candle and it hit my uh, target, so my trade's over. But look at this. If it gets to 25.85 and prints a bearish candle on the one hour or four hour, that would be a first touch. Yep. Aaron Trade, you got it. That's exactly, look at these touches. Boom, 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 bam. It even held here before it fell. That would be a beautiful first touch trade. That would be a beautiful one. Yep, that's good. Uh, and then the, the Kiwi. Um, yeah, Kiwi could give a first touch uh, here at 8103, right? Right around 8103, 8110, right around there. That would be where the Kiwi would give us a nice bounce right there. So that would be a first touch on the Kiwi right here. Right? So they're everywhere. You just have to see them. Once you see them, you'll always see them. Thanks, guys. Uh, Pan, I, we, sorry, Pan, we don't have time. We got to go. I love trading oil, though. Um, thanks a lot, guys, for spending time here today. I wish you a very happy week of trading. Thank you so much, Suhan. Thank you, Dale Hardy. Thank you, Girish. Thanks, Gabriel. Frederick, great to see you. Bye, Yuka. See you, Bye, Gabriel. Take care, Aaron. See you, Minaj. Take care, Rasika. Bye, David. Have a good one, Mike. Thanks a lot. Bye.